Welcome to Cyber GMBC. April is the month in which showers will bring flowers. And we are praying for God to shower down blessings that will bloom in our ministry. We will introduce our wellness center three days a week. We will have our starting date later this month. Our prayer is that the sermons and worship experience will be inspirational as well as transformational. We welcome you to our Cyber GMBC worship experience. good the Lord is. Amen. It's truly a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 I thank God every day he allows me to wake up to see a day. Amen. Because it's truly a blessing to be here. Amen. You can be anywhere else. Somebody wish they could be sitting where you're sitting at right now. But praise be to God. He allowed you his grace and his mercy to walk into his house of praise. One more time. And since you walk into his house of praise, it just makes sense to praise his name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for the day is Philippians. Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13, which simply states that I can do everything. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. 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 And I don't know who you are or where you are. But I know that no matter how strong that you may be or how strong that you are, it's going to come to a point that you're going to need strength from the Lord. Amen. I don't care what ministry you in, if you sit in the pulpit or the pew, it's going to come to a point you're going to reach a place in your life that the only one that can give you strength to get through what you're going through is God. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we come today, Lord, first to say thank you. Father God, we thank you for allowing us your grace and your mercy to see another day. Father God, for this is a day that we've never seen before and that we'll never see again. And Father God, someone right now is dealing with something that they can't handle, but we know that you can. Father God, someone right now struggling with something that they can't control, but we know that you can. Father God, someone right now is wrestling with a situation that they can't see themselves out of, but we know that you will. So Father God, right now we thank you in advance. Right now we praising you in advance. Yes. Right now we shout glory in advance. Father God, we know that you can, we know that you will, we know that you're able, so we say thank you for being God and God all by yourself. We say thank you for keeping us wrapped around your everlasting arms of grace and mercy. We say thank you for allowing us to not let last night be our last night. We say thank you for giving us life, health, and strength and breath in our body to praise your name. And Father God, long as we can and long as we are able, we're going to give you all the praise. Long as we can and long as we able, we're going to give you all the glory. Long as we can and long as we able, we're going to shout hallelujah. Long as we can and long as we able. We going to salute your son, Jesus the Christ, and submit these prayers in his name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord lives. He still lives, and he reigns on high, and I'm so grateful about it. Amen. Ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Jesus, Jesus. 
gonna say it. Gonna see it. Like, they it. like they used to. Since I laid my burden down. Well, every round goes high and higher. Good God Almighty. Good God. Yeah. Well, friends don't treat me like they used to. Yeah. Yeah. Good God of mine. Yeah. My bird. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Jesus on the main line. Tell them what you want. Oh. Jesus on the main line. Thank you, Jesus. Tell them what you want. Well. Jesus on the main line. Tell them what you want. Well. Call them up and tell them what you want. Well. Yeah, tell him what you want. Yes, call, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Well, call him up and tell him what you want. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Some of you are not clapping. Come on. Well, let me see if you know this one. Let me see if you know this one. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah, this little light of mine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, all in my home, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, 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 I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah, all in my home, I'm gonna. The mothers used to say it like this: Shine, 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 shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, shine, 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 shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah, shine. Shine, shine, shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everybody, clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Your hands, clap, 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 clap your hands. Hey, joy bells keeps ringing in my soul. Oh, joy bells keeps ringing in my soul. Joy bells, joy bells, joy bells keeps ringing in my soul. Yes, joy bells keeps ringing in my soul. Lord keeps ringing in my soul. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Lord, keep ringing in my soul. Yes, Lord. 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 Everybody clap your hands. Come on and clap them. Come on. We're going to say that one more time. Praise him. One more time. Hey, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, help me. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
aleluya Lord, yes to your will and your way. Lord, we say thank you. We've gathered here now this morning to hear from you. And Lord, unless you preach through us, there is no word for us. So take my mind and think your thoughts. Take my words and be your words. Lord, use me in spite of me. All of my flaws and shortcomings. Lord, look beyond all of them and see the needs of us that are gathered here this morning. Lord, we need to hear a word from you. Lord, give us a word that is liberating, Lord. Give us a word that is transformative, O oh Lord. A word that will make us better when we leave than we were when we arrived. And it only happens through your anointing and your power. And we ask for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Giving honor to God, the head of all life, to all you, my brothers and sisters. I got to stop and simply say our deacons are looking good this morning. Amen. Amen. And they got good taste in that color scheme. Amen. Amen. There is a word this morning coming from uh, the gospel of St. Matthew. Amen. Beginning at the 27th chapter and a few of the following verses in today's translation is the New English translation and you'll see why shortly during the feast the governor was accustomed to release one prisoner to the crowd whomever they wanted at that time they had in custody a notorious prisoner named Jesus Barabbas so after they had assembled Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Christ? For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor asked them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Like to use for a thought from which to preach this morning, they chose the wrong Jesus. They chose the wrong Jesus. We are now a week beyond the celebration of Resurrection Sunday. But I wanted to do a review this morning of a major event that's often overlooked and simply passed over. On Palm Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem borrowing a donkey and a colt. The disciples had laid their clothes on these animals that Jesus would sit on. Then a large crowd also spread their clothes on the road while others cut 
palm branches and spread them on the road. Jesus was surrounded by a crowd in front and behind him that shouted Hosanna to the son of David blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest as Jesus entered Jerusalem the entire city was in an uproar and the question was asked who is this someone from the crowd retorted it it's the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus then entered the temple, stopped the economic exploitation of the poor and travelers by overturning the table on the matter of social justice because instead of God's house being a house of prayer, they had turned it into a den of thieves. Then Jesus passed an Affordable Care Act that gave access to all who were sick and he administered free health care to them all. But when the chief priests and legal experts saw the health care helping others who had pre-existing conditions, and when they heard the children shouting Hosanna to the son of David, they were fit to be tied. And even asked Jesus, did he hear what the children were saying? Jesus replied, yes, and then he asked them, have they ever read from the mouths of babies and infants your arranged praise for yourself? By this time, the plot is getting thicker as they are trying to figure out a way to get rid of Jesus. Five chapters later, at a meeting at Cyrus' courtyard, it was decided that they would do whatever it took to have Jesus arrested and eventually killed. See, whenever you take a stand for justice, the privileged status quo gets offended and will do whatever it takes to silence your voice and will pay off folks who are close to you or even look like you. Long before there was a Candace Owens, a Tim Scott, or a Clarence Thomas, there was another traitor, but at least he was a freedom fighter who simply felt that Jesus wasn't moving fast enough. They began working on those closest to Jesus and found a traitor by the name of Judas Iscariot. For 30 pieces of silver, he would betray Jesus and have him handed over to the officials who were jealous and wanted Jesus dead. Last week, Resurrection Sunday, we celebrated the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Make no mistake about it, if Jesus does not rise from the dead, then everything we are doing now would be in vain. On Resurrection Sunday, we preached Mary's sermon because up until then, death had claims on all of us and acknowledged, we acknowledged the fact that Mary of Magdala was the first disciple to see and talk to our risen Savior and proclaim that Jesus lived. The Bible states that the soul that sins will surely die, and the forecast wasn't too good, for the Bible also stated that all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this is why resurrection is such a big deal, because it's bigger than the splitting of the Red Sea. It's bigger than the splitting of the Jordan River. It's bigger than the Great Flood. It's bigger than the crumbling walls of Jericho. It's bigger than the battle between David and Goliath. It's bigger than the sacrificial suicidal slaughter of the Philistines at the hands of Samson. It's bigger than the seven times heated fiery furnace or hungry lions in the lion's den. It's bigger than turning water into wine. It's bigger than turning a funeral possession into a family reunion. It's bigger than taking two sardines and five biscuits and feeding over 20,000 people. It's bigger than Jesus' personal friend Lazarus coming back to life. If the resurrection of Jesus does not occur, then death is still the final chapter in our lives. That's why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday because we know just how important that event is in the lives of those who love the Lord and are willing to follow Jesus. Well, we just share with you two important and vital weeks in our Christian calendar, but could there be more? Think about it. One week, Palm Sunday, Jesus is being worshipped and praises are being raised in his honor. In the next week, he's getting up from the dead and giving meaning and life to the Christian journey. And I share with you that Reverend Davis turned me on to the ID channel. And because of that, I now look at murders differently. 
I want to know what really happened behind the scenes. And since I began watching ID, they come out with more shows that specialize crimes and murders almost every week. Well, I got nosy and I wanted to find out what exactly happened between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday. In pursuit of the finding of what the events of Passion Week, I've discovered that choices were made that changed the outcome of history. It was something that occurred on Monday, Thursday, a day before Good Friday that we rarely hear anything about. We celebrated the resurrection of Jesus last week, but I'm also glad that he lives, but I'm equally intrigued by what took place that Good Friday morning. The chief priests and the elders had concluded that Jesus had to be put to death. And any time one preaches social justice and preach liberation, the privileged status quo doesn't want to change to happen that will stop their bottom line. And when you threaten their economic overflow, you are considered dangerous. So they bound him and took him to Pilate, the governor. And when Judas, who portrayed Jesus, saw that Jesus had been condemned to die, he felt guilty and returned the 30 pieces of silver and confessed that I had done wrong because I portrayed an innocent man. But they said, Judas, that's your problem. And it has nothing to do with us. Judas threw the 30 pieces of silver in the temple, left, and hung himself. They picked up the money and said, according to the law. Now they want to follow the law. It's not permissible to put blood money in the offering tray, and they took the money and bought land with it. Now Jesus is standing between the governor, Pontius Pilate, for questioning, but Jesus didn't respond to the accusations of the chief priests and elders. Now that we're all together on that Good Friday, let's read exactly what occurs next. Pontius Pilate was the sixth Roman prosecutor who was not liked by the Jews because he would deliberately violate their law and provoke them. However, Pilate has been placed in a political pickle because this is perhaps his last shot to patch up his political relationship with Herod. He assumes that this would be a no-lose situation because he found no guilt among Jesus and knew that envy was the motivation factor in the first place. In his heart, he knew that Jesus was innocent, but to make peace with the privileged status quo, he continued with the trial. Jesus had been accused of three political crimes. First of all, misleading the nation. Secondly, forbidding the paying of taxes. And thirdly, claims to be the king. It would be to Pilate's political advantage to, to, to get rid of Jesus, but he kept coming to the same conclusion that he found no fault in him. Jesus had a group who wants to convict him and a governor who's unwilling to condemn him. So now we are going to look over our text, lift up three points of interest, and let you go this morning. First of all, there is the custom. Verse 15 talks about it was customary during the Passover as a gesture of goodwill and amnesty that one prisoner would be released or pardoned. In that society, there were two forms of amnesty, an acquittal before the trial or pardon of condemnation after the trial. The Jews wanted Jesus dead, but the only form of punishment they could afflict would be the stoning to death. But because of his popularity, they feared that it wouldn't work, so they sought crucifixion, which could only be performed by the Roman government. They would use the government to fulfill their demonic plot. Oh, that sounds familiar. They would use the government to fulfill their demonic plot. And how often has the government had his hands in the oppression of a people, especially among those who are supposed to be its citizens? So in a political move, they backed Pilate up in a corner for which he thought he could easily escape. This would be the best opportunity to get rid of Jesus once and for all because although the chief priests and elders wanted him dead, Pilate found no fault with him. Well, let's follow the probable thinking of Pilate. It makes sense in 2024. So Pilate would use the custom of releasing a prisoner to grant Jesus freedom and still be seen as being politically correct. 
It seemed like the perfect storm because someone had to be released. And surely this man who calls himself the king of the Jews had done nothing worthy of crucifixion. This crowd would not knowingly convict an innocent man simply because he was preaching and teaching liberation or calling out those who were profiting from the oppression of others, would it? Justice would be served today, and Jesus, who was innocent, would be released. So Pilate presented one of the most violent prisoners to make the decision as plain as possible. Pilate's wife sent him a message during the trial, a text message encouraging him to let Jesus go due to the nightmares that she had about the injustice Jesus had already suffered. So on one hand, Pilate's conscience is troubling him because he knew the real reason Jesus was before him. On the other hand, the move could help his political career. And to complicate this matter, Pilate's wife has been having nightmares about the injustice that Jesus is receiving. So Pilate thought that he would let the people decide and that would get him off the hook. Well, let us come to the criminal. This is where I made a shocking discovery that most biblical translations do not list. There must be a release of someone today. And so Pilate decided that he would stack the odds in Jesus' favor. Thus, you now have two men by the name of Jesus. <clears throat> one who deserves to die and one who's willing to die. And I just couldn't let this golden moment pass us by without getting to know someone or something about this other Jesus. So I set up a quick spiritual Zoom. And he so graciously accepted the link in and talked with me for a few moments because I told him that I was going to preach about this morning and I wanted him to at least get his perspective on this historic eventful day. He said, Dr. D, most people only know me by Barabbas, which means son of the father. He said, Dr. D, there isn't really a whole lot written about me in the text and most folks are unaware of my surname, Jesus. He said, I asked him, why did you think, or why do you think that Pontius Pilate would put you up against Jesus Christ to be released? He said, Dr. D, I truly believe that Pilate was certain that Jesus Christ would be released instead of me. He said, Dr. D, can I keep it real this morning? I said, that's the only way I like it. He said, I was not a choir boy, and according to my sleeve, I was notorious, I was an insurrectionist, I was a robber and a murderer. In other words, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, so I challenged the government by protesting the injustice my people dealt with, and law enforcement was glad to lock me up. He said, Mark and Luke shared that I was involved in a riot that eventually led to persons losing their lives. And that's why murderer is listed on my rap sleep. And for good measure, they added robbery too. He said, there was no doubt that I was guilty. And I was okay with dying for the struggle because I had channeled my inner Tupac who song only God can judge me said I'd rather die like a man than live like a cow. He said I had no issue with my work advance, advancing the progress of justice for my community and my people. He said so I truly believe that Pilate was simply getting my hopes up knowing good and well that if the decision was between me and Jesus Christ there was no way that I would be released. He asked the crowd of which many were praising Jesus on Palm Sunday by singing Hosanna who did they want to be released. He asked this same crowd that they want Jesus Barabbas or Jesus Christ. He only asked them because he knew the real reason why Jesus Christ was being before him was due to jealousy and preserving the privileged status quo of the chief priests and the elders. After the decision, Jesus Christ would suffer police brutality before putting to death by law enforcement. He said, pay attention to the actions of some members of law enforcement. 
They stripped him naked, mocked him, and beat him while in custody. They dehumanized in him and humiliated him because they had qualified immunity, and so there was no accountability for their actions. He said these good law enforcement officers stood behind the blue wall of silence, even as one officer said that surely this must have been the Son of God. He said, Dr. D, Jesus understands the injustice that many in your community experience now in America. Since 2005, less than 140 officers have been charged and only less than 20 have been convicted of murder. Well, we all saw how Fox News reported that the only reason why Derek Chevin was convicted was because of the pressure of the most dangerous domestic terrorist group in America, Black Lives Matter. However, it wasn't Black Lives Matter who stormed the Capitol on January 6, 2021, trying to defend a lie and a liar. So I guess Fox News overlooked the 40 plus eyewitnesses, the testimonies from the other police officers, the experts in nearly 10 minute video that captured the murder as being the evidence that the jury used to find him guilty on all three counts. But then we have the choice. He said, Dr. D, it really tripped me out because some way and somehow the chief priests and elders had worked the crowd to choose me over Jesus Christ. Perhaps they posted if misinformation on social media, but it worked. He said, I could not believe that these, chain, these same church folks would choose me over Jesus. He asked the crowd again, who do they want, me or Jesus Christ? And once again, they chose me over Jesus. I told him, Jesus the rabbits, I am speechless because I couldn't understand how they chose you according to your rap sheet over Jesus. I told him I didn't understand how Pilate's fail proof plan had indeed failed. They chose you over the Jesus that healed the sick and raised the dead. I said they chose you over the Jesus who opened up blind eyes and unstopped deaf ears. I said they chose you over the Jesus who caused the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. I said they chose you over the Jesus who cooled the fever in Peter's mother-in-law and who granted whose garment healed the woman with the issue of blood. I said they chose you over the Jesus who brought the widow of Maim, Jairus' daughter, and Lazarus back to life. I said they chose you over the Jesus who took false five small fish and two biscuits and fed over 20,000 persons, not to mention turning water into wine. I said they chose you over the Jesus who claimed, who calmed the angry sea and walked on water. I said, is, is there anything else you would like me to share? He said, yes. He said, I understand that I should have died for my crimes. And I'm okay with it because Dr. King said that if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. He said, as a matter of fact, I should have been the one to die on Calvary that Good Friday afternoon between the two thieves. He said, although most folks did not know my name, please make sure they know my story. I said, I got you. I got you, Barabbas. He said, tell them that I was the Jesus who should have died on Calvary, but tell them that Jesus Christ became my perfect substitute. He said, tell them that he died in my place and they chose the wrong Jesus, but I'm glad that Jesus Christ is the right Jesus. He said, he died on the cross. You will still be, he said, had I died on the cross, you would still be in your sins and I would still be in the grave but thanks be to God for an alternative ending at Calvary he said there were three crosses at Calvary but understand the dynamics between these three crosses with Jesus Christ instead of Jesus Barabbas he said first of all the man on the left died a blasphemer the man on the right died a believer and the man in the middle died the benefactor he said the man on the left died a sinner and the man on the right died a saint and the man in the middle died a savior he said the man on the left died in rejection the man on the right died in repentance and the man in the middle died a redeemer he said the man on the left died in judgment the man on the right 
died justified and the man died in the middle died for our justification he said the man on the right died in sin the man on the right died from sin and the man in the middle died for sin he said tell them they chose the wrong Jesus but I'm so glad they chose the wrong Jesus because the Jesus they chose went up Calvary's mountain he died for your sins and my sins the Jesus that they chose should not have been the one on the cross but thanks be to God he took your place and he took my place and tell them there was something special about the Jesus they did choose this was the Jesus they put in a borrowed new tomb but tell them that early Sunday morning that that Jesus get up from the dead and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know I said I know he holds the future and now life is worth living because he lives tell them that I'm so glad they chose the wrong Jesus the one that shouldn't have died but he died anyway the one that did nothing but good but he died anyway the one that came to set free and deliver the one that came to liberate from our sins the one who died for oppressive systems of oppressive government the one who came down to make right wrong the one who came down to make wrong right the one who came down to lift up the burden down they chose the wrong Jesus but I'm so glad that Jesus Christ is the right Jesus is there anybody else that can testify he saved my soul he made me whole he washed me in the blood of the lamb he walks with me he talks with me he tells me tells me that I am his own they chose the wrong Jesus but thanks be to God the Jesus they chose was not the Jesus that died for me not the Jesus that got up for me and so I'm happy 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 all the day because they chose the wrong Jesus but we got a right to the right Jesus I said we got a right to the right Jesus I didn't say the white Jesus I said the right Jesus because the right Jesus sits high and looks low the right Jesus turns bad into good the right Jesus brings liberation in the midst of oppression yeah yeah That's glad that they chose the wrong Jesus. Is there anybody here that will wave your hands and thank the Lord that they chose the wrong Jesus? And because they chose the wrong Jesus, that gives us access to the right Jesus that picks you up and turns you around and plant your feet on solid ground. The right Jesus makes you run and ain't nobody chasing you. The right Jesus makes you love when you should be hating. The right Jesus makes you think right when you want to think wrong. The right Jesus makes a difference in your life. Anybody here glad for the right Jesus? Glad for the right Jesus? Glad. For the right Jesus. 
there may be one here this morning who do not know Jesus, the right Jesus. There's all kinds of wrong Jesus. Matter of fact, to some, he just came out with a Bible. Then he endorsed. But the right Jesus sees sin and handles it. Sees oppression and handles it. The right Jesus sees those in trouble and helps them out. And if you're here this morning and you want to know the right Jesus, won't you please come? Because tomorrow is not promised. All we have is right now. If you're here today, do not know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, won't you please come? If you're here this morning, you are saved but do not have a church home, won't you please come? If you are here this morning, you just want to rededicate yourself back to the Lord, won't you come? Amen. Amen. Is there another? Is there another here today? Is there anyone else that feels the Lord tugging at your heart? Tugging at your spirit? Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Just raise your hand. No matter where you are. And we'll take you in. Is there anyone else? If you feel the Lord tugging at your spirit. Won't you come? Tomorrow is not promised. Yesterday is a canceled check. And all you have is right now. May God bless you. And may God keep you. Is our prayer. Let us say amen. Let us say amen again. Let us say amen one more time. Now, just before we get to our communion experience well I got a little time so we're going to go ahead and do the communion amen and then I'm going to have one who is running for office to come and share for a few minutes with us amen and so we want to prepare our hearts and minds now for our communion if you have been baptized amen uh, regardless of how the baptism may have happened I know we good Baptist folks, and we believe in submission and submersion, if you will. But I want you to understand that baptism is simply symbolic of a spiritual action that we cannot see. That means that it is possible to go down a dry devil and get up a wet devil. Because if the interaction, if the change doesn't happen on the inside, then you only get wet. Amen. And so baptism is symbolic of that. And so if, oh, yes, amen, amen. We want to do the covenant as we are preparing for our communion. Amen. Has everyone who desire to be served been served? Amen. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and upon the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do now, in the presence of God's angels in this assembly, most solemnly and cheerfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ.
We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions to diligently study the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others. Endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards humanity to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We more over engaged that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's holy word all together. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be power and glory forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus would be betrayed, that we just talked about at the beginning of our sermon. And after all that he had gone through that evening, he grabbed bread, broke it, passed it among his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let us eat together. Likewise, he took the cup, uh, the wine symbolizing the blood. And scripture tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for our sin. Let us drink together. Scripture says that after doing this, the disciples had gathered together, had a song and a prayer. Amen, amen, amen. We are thankful again to God for all of you, our brothers and sisters. And this is something that we do as often as we can, amen, to symbolize what Jesus did for us as a reminder of how we were in trouble. Amen. But Jesus died on the cross for us, but ultimately got up. And now we know that humanity chose the wrong Jesus. But thanks be to God, we got the right Jesus. Amen. 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 We are grateful to God for all of you that are here. Amen. Now at this time, amen, as we are finishing up, we're going to have a uh, beloved brother to come and to share with us a few minutes, um, Mr. Hill Harper. Amen. We're going to, amen, <laughs> who is not a stranger to GMBC. Amen. Good morning, church family. This is my fraternity brother, Dr. D. It's wonderful to be back in this beautiful sanctuary. I had a chance to, 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 to offer a, a speech here with Michigan United, and it was uh, uh, such an important place. This, this sanctuary is so beautiful, and, 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 and celebrating the work that all of you are doing here is incredible. And, and I just, I, I want to take a uh, a, a point because my heart is heavy this morning because family when I started my career early I, I, I went to Harvard Law School and the Kennedy School of Government and then I ended up moving to New York City then ultimately moving to Los Angeles because of my my career I wanted to be like Harry Belafonte I wanted to to act and change the world as an activist and my friend a man by the name of Jeffrey Anderson Gunter walked me into a church in Los Angeles because I needed to find a church home there. Walked me into First AME Church in Los Angeles where the Reverend Cecil L. Murray was the pastor. And Cecil L. Murray died yesterday at 94 years old. And he 
was a mentor of mine, and I have to just take a point of privilege because this is the first sanctuary I've been in since he passed, and talk about real quickly the impact that he had on my life because I don't think words will do it. But my career was starting to take off, and he said, he'll come here and talk to me. He said, I need you to join the usher board. He said, I need you to put on the white gloves. I need you to humble yourself to the congregation. I need you to get yelled at by people who didn't want to sit in the pew you put them in. I needed you to serve so you were reminded why. I know y'all got the toughest job because I've been there. And then I went on a trip to Africa and I wanted to give my mentor something. And I saw in Nairobi there was a, a woman who had, who had stitched, stitched together a, a preacher's stole. And, and, and I, I saw it and she was literally doing it by hand. And I bought it and I brought it back. And then when I was giving it to him, I got nervous because, cause, because Pastor, it, it wasn't... You know, it wasn't that fine. It wasn't like velvet and the silk and really fine. It was literally hand done with cloths that she had found on the street. And, and I was like, oh, is he going to think? Because I was worried about what he would think. And he took it. He opened it up. He looked at it. He smiled, said thank you, and then went on. And I was like, oh, this is horrible. And, uh, but then Black History Month came, and he wore that all four Sundays. And... The, the level of love and grace that he had and what he represented to me is so powerful. And, and, and he taught me that it's service. And, and ultimately, that's why I'm running for the US Senate, is to serve. And if you're reminded, and Pastor just talked about it, if we are actually going to solve the health care crisis, if we're going to solve the mass incarceration crisis, if we're going to solve the gun violence crisis, if we're going to solve the affordability crisis in our communities, we need folks in government that are willing to do this work. And the problem is we keep electing the same type of people to office over and over and over again, <laughs> expecting a different result. And my father was a psychiatrist. He told me the definition of insanity is when you continue to do the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. So why do we keep electing the same people to office? We have to bring new and change and new energy. And I promise you this, this is a, an opportunity that we haven't had. I turned in 30,000 signatures to the Richard H. Austin building in Lansing to get on this ballot. And Richard H. Austin was the Secretary of State for this state, the first black statewide elected official. He ran for US Senate twice, and we were not able to get him elected. This is an opportunity. The first time in decades a black Democrat will be on a U.S. Senate ballot. This is the first time in decades we in this state have a chance to elect true representation. Shirley Chisholm told us, if you don't have a seat at the table, then bring a folding chair. I like to say, if you don't have a seat at the table, then you're on the menu. And we've been on the menu for far too long. When are we going to start to fight and realize our power? In the last primary, black turnout in Michigan was less than 10%. During the Coleman Young years, black turnout was 60 plus percent. At that level of percentage, we would control every election in this state. We have to remind ourselves of our power. And as pastor said, they chose the wrong Jesus. Don't choose the wrong senator. So we need your help, though, because if we're going to change the turnout levels, we need to expand our network and talk to people across the state. If you know somebody in Petoskey, Traverse City, Marquette, Muskegon, Battle Creek, Kalamazoo, Benton Harbor, if you know somebody in Bay City or Saginaw or Flint, you know somebody up in Sault Ste. Marie, wherever, we need to reach those folks. So there'll be a sign-up sheet in the back. Anybody who's willing to volunteer or participate with us, we, we want you with us because we have four months to change the world. We have four months, August 6th, to change the world. And, and I, I've been shocked, Pastor. I, I talked, I've been knocking on doors. Talking. Many people in our community don't even know what a primary is. When the primary election is actually more important than the general election, because the primary is where you choose who's going to be on the ballot in November. And if we keep choosing the wrong people, November don't really matter. We're in this together. Dr. King said we're all tied together in a single garment of mutual destiny. That means no matter how well I may be doing, if you're not doing well, 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 then I'm not doing well. We're not doing well. That collective behavior has to be there. And, 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 and just like 
Pastor talked about releasing prisoners. My last book was a book called Letters to an Incarcerated Brother. We have to cut our incarceration population by 50% in the next 10 years, and we can do it if we have the right leadership. We can make this happen. We have an undereducated, over-incarcerated population. We have to flip that dynamic because U.S. Senators decide one thing that's vitally important. Where does that $7 trillion annual federal budget that is your money go? So that's what they decide. Do you want your money go to, to fund foreign violence or do you want it to fund education right here at home? I'm gonna choose education. Let's do this together. God bless you, thank you so much. Yeah. Let us say man again. Thank God for Brother Hill Harper. Amen. Amen. He came by and was able to stay for the majority of the service. Amen. Amen. I didn't know he didn't think that was going to happen at a Black Baptist Church. Amen. Particularly on the first Sunday. Amen. But it did happen. Now at this time, we want to prepare our hearts and minds for the opportunity to give the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's giving time. We have discovered that for God so loved the world that God gave. Amen. And anything you love going to cost you. Amen. Help me, somebody. Anything you love, anyone you love is going to cost you. Amen. It's going to cost you something. Amen. And so we're asking those who love the Lord, who love God, who love Jesus to be obedient in your giving at this time. Um, there are various ways to give. You can give electronically. You can give um, old school. And that's simply by uh, putting your money in an envelope and putting in the receptacle there in the sanctuary, the back of the sanctuary, or in the vest of you. Lord, we pray now and we ask you to bless those who will give. Lord, multiply what is given. Trouble those who will not give and they have it to give. Lord, we ask you to bless those who have a desire to give but do not have it to give. Lord, we ask you to bless that everything that is given will be according to your will and your word. Lord, that we will do what we need to do to continue the building of the, your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now at this time, we have Sister Johnson is going to come and to share some announcements with us. And I want to appreciate you all for the most part for doing what has been asked of you and to submit um, announcements uh, two weeks out, except if there is a turn-in date or a due date, amen. And so she's going to come now and share um, the announcements. Good morning, good morning. God bless you all. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, Pastor, our associate minister, all of our guests and our virtual viewers. I have the following announcements to share with you this morning. Please join us for the upcoming Saturday Sunday School on April the 13th at 10 a.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live as Reverend Tyron Price teaches the lesson, What Only the Spirit Can Do, oh Acts 2 and 4. Let's come out and support Reverend Price. Also remember, if you are still working to be rebuild after the August 24th through 26, 2023 severe storms, flooding, and tornadoes, FEMA is here to help. You may contact FEMA and receive resources to help clean up and repair. Contact FEMA at 833-FEMA for us. That's 833-336-2487. Also, if you have yet to apply for the FEMA disaster assistance, there is still time, but the time is running out. April the 8th is the deadline date to receive support for the disaster assistance. Again, you may contact FEMA to receive information about that. Please prepare for the recruitment brunch held by the culinary ministry. If you are looking to join the culinary ministry, please stay uh, for church on April the 13th at 11 a.m. You will find information about how you can join the, uh, the ministry 
as well as find out information about the Safe Serve certification program, which is coming up on April the 27th from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. Again, further information about that, you can join or come to the recruitment brunch or look in your e-bulletin, which is prepared for your edification. Please remember that the SAGE Ministry is inviting all who would like to and will to join them to see the play Annabella in July at the Detroit Repertory Theater on Saturday, April the 27th at 3 p.m. For information regarding tickets and further information about this offering, you may see either Mother Joanne Blanding, Mother Nancy Brown, or Deacon May Bates, or check your e-bulletin. Choir rehearsal is today after worship services. So those who are in the choir, please prepare to stay after. And we have Okay. God bless you. That is all that we have today. <laughs> Enjoy your Sunday. Thank Sister Johnson, amen, for her enthusiasm as she delivers information for us. Amen. 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 the table will be papers for those who would like to volunteer. Also, I forgot to announce last week, and I felt badly, uh, for those that still want to sign the petition that a ceasefire, be a letter be given to uh, President Biden and the administration that we uh, are demanding a ceasefire in the Israel, the Middle East conflict that's going on. We definitely don't want our tax dollars going to aid genocide. Amen. If you have not signed, please do so today because I want to turn it in um, this week. Also, as we know that in a couple of weeks, the NFL draft will be here in Detroit. Well, the City Shield Security Services, they are looking to hire for April the 22nd through April the 27th. Amen. Um, jobs are available. Benefits include health care, sc college scholarships, flexible days, afternoons, midnights, um, and a pay rate of 15 to 25 dollars. So per hour. Amen. So if someone is looking um, to have to be 18 and older and must pass a background check. Amen. Now, this is an opportunity that may start. Amen with this, but it may lead to something else, but it's an opportunity, one, to be downtown where everything is going on. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, the draft doesn't happen in Detroit that often. Matter of fact, it has never happened. Amen. So for those that would like to apply, um, here's a QR code and here's a, a slip here, and I will also place this on the outside table, but uh, the gentleman came to the council on Tuesday and shared this, and so I'm doing what was asked of me just to further um, inform you that if you know anyone that may look for this opportunity to pick up a few extra dollars, those who may be uh, share riding and Uber driving and everything else, here's a chance to do something a little different um, for a few days, amen. So the opportunity is here, amen. We never know what it may lead to, but we wanna make certain that if any opportunities come our way, that we inform you about the opportunities that comes our way. Amen? Amen. And we also want to share that on last week, I had announced that the wellness centers uh, would start this past uh, Tuesday. It did not happen. It is on um, delay until further notice until I get the, the, the nod from the state. So in the meantime, our regular days of Tuesday, I mean, our regular days of Thursday and Sunday will be our days, but as soon as the state is ready to move forward, you will be the first to know. Amen? Now we want to uh, hear from the report. Amen. Amen. I'm a new soldier. Amen. Involved in the ministry. Amen. Pastor Duckworth, my Gethsemane Church family, God is smiling 
the angels in heaven are rejoicing All right. All right. because favor has been shown upon us because we have a candidate for baptism. Amen. Right. Amen. His name is Gerald York. Amen. Right. Mr. York, amen. Amen. Welcome. Amen. And we're going to baptize the fourth Sunday. Fourth Sunday will be baptism day here at GNBC. All right. Amen. 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 Man, she said with such enthusiasm, it made me want to come in. one more time. Amen. We are grateful to God for that. For all of our visitors, if this is your very first time visiting with us, could you please stand so that we can identify you? Amen. You, you family now, bro. Amen. Amen. So glad to have our brother. Amen. Is there anyone else that is here for the first time today? Hold one second. We want you to stand. We want you to give us your name. We're not trying to embarrass you, but we just want to know who you are. Amen. My name is Veronica Davis. I'm the mother of uh, Therese Scott. And actually, it's not my first time. Amen. It's just been a long time. All right. I used to come here with... Uh, Sister Velma Levy, that's okay. my aunt. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's Amen. my aunt. Amen. So I've been here before, but it's been a long, long time. Amen. I live in Florida, that's why. All right. <laughs> well, we appreciate your presence. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. Yes, we remember Sister Levy. Amen. She served as uh, chair of the trustee ministry shortly after I arrived. Amen. So we thank God for her memory. Amen. And for you. Are there any other first time visitors that are here today? Amen. If not, if you all are ready to go home, call to call. Amen. After all to call. Amen. It's written down here, but it's combined with benediction. Amen. Uh, we want to come um, trusting God, believing God um, for various persons that are dealing with uh, medical procedures and medical challenges. We're happy to see uh, Deacon Carter is back. Amen. From her uh, journey to Mississippi, she came back safe and sound, and we praise God for her. Um, but we're praying for the family. Amen. We also, as was mentioned last week, want to continue to pray for Sister Quintella Woods. Amen. Is there anyone else that we need to be in special prayer for? Mother Brown. Amen. Mike Bracey. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 Any others? Amen. 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 Anyone else? Amen. 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 Any others? Any others? Lord, we come now. We thank you that you are a caring God. Lord, not only are you a caring God, but Lord, you're able to answer every prayer all at the same time. Lord, we do understand that often your prayers, our prayers are not answered the way we want. But Lord, you do answer them. So Lord, we're petitioning upon you anyway on behalf of those that are here on behalf of those that may be watching virtually, oh Lord, all of the situations and all of the circumstances have not been made audible. But Lord, you know them. And so Lord, I'm asking you to touch every person, Lord, that is in need of healing, Lord. Heal every person, oh Lord, that is in need of being healed, oh Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to touch marriages, Touch relationships among children, among siblings, O oh Lord, among families, Lord, among co-workers, among neighbors, O oh Lord, among those within our church family, Lord. Bless. Lord, you know how to heal. You know how to set free and to deliver. We pray for our governments, O oh Lord. 
Lord, we pray that those that are wrong will get right. Lord, we pray that those that are trying to do right will stay on that path. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you make us vessels, oh Lord, instruments that will speak on behalf of not only ourselves, but those who are voiceless, oh Lord. We know that you are a God who loves everyone, oh Lord. Regardless of our different backgrounds, regardless of our ethnicity, regardless of our gender, regardless of our gender identity, oh Lord. Lord, you love everyone. And Lord, give us that godly love, oh Lord, that we will pray for and love everyone as well. We come against, Lord, the status quo theology, Lord. We come against the oppressive theology, oh Lord. We come against, Lord, the theology of racism and sexism and division, oh Lord. We come against them right now in Jesus' name. You are a set freeing God. And Lord, you have the power to touch the hearts and minds of humans and allow us to do what's right, what's just in your name. Bless us now as we prepare to leave from this place. Grant us traveling mercies that we will arrive where we're going safe and sound. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Don't forget the petitions on the table. Don't forget to sign the letter for us to send to the president. Um, and anything else, anyone interested again in the security for the draft, please see me. Amen.